You should not have any trouble picking up the Panasonic GX85 and immediately taking great photos. Using either P, Program Mode, or IA, Intelligent Auto, you're pretty much guaranteed proper focus and exposure. The GX85 is small, but not tiny. It's fully automatic, but has a complete set of manual controls. And it's high quality, but at a reasonable price point. It has a 16 megapixel 4 thirds sensor with an interchangeable micro 4 thirds lens mount that can record images in raw format. 5 axis in body stabilization. It records video up to 4K resolution with auto or manual settings. There's a viewfinder, a tilting LCD, and Wi Fi to transfer images to a smartphone. That's the usual. It does everything you'd expect a fully featured camera in this class to do. Stop here and there's no reason not to be happy. But as on its more expensive models, Panasonic has a feature set that goes much further than the competition. Although high-end cameras offer burst speeds up to say 20 frames per second, in this category 10 is what you can expect. The GX85 does 30. The GX85 can let you choose your focus point after you've taken your photo, or adjust the sensor's response by adjusting highlight and shadow curves. I'll go a little deeper in a minute. And while there are more, those three features can really transform your photos and your video. We'll start on the outside. A fairly clunky black plastic box, which includes a left side viewfinder, pop-up flash with a guide number of 4, a hot shoe, and an LCD that flips up and down. A slight grip bump on the front, best to use the included strap or a wrist strap. The review kit included Panasonic's 12 to 32 millimeter lens, and I might as well start complaining with this. Although I can appreciate that the lens collapses to make it smaller and easier to carry, extending the lens to shoot is a bit of a pain. Added to that, the on-off switch is carefully tucked in behind the mode dial and it's too complicated to get ready to shoot. When I'm holding the camera with the grip, I want the on-off control under my index finger, not my thumb. It took me a while to stop turning the front dial trying to get the camera powered on. Then you look at the screen and this. I do appreciate the convenience of a movie button that works in all modes but I prefer switching to movie mode and using the shutter button to stop start. And the mode dial. I realize that there are 24 scenes and 22 filters, but maybe they could all be accessed along with panorama and iAuto from one position. Nice to have a front and a back dial though, so for manual fans it's easy to control both. I like the front dial's feel better, but the back dial can be pressed to change function. Let's set resolution and quality. Four aspect ratios, three resolutions, two JPEG quality settings, which can be combined with RAW. Right now, you're seeing the camera screen, but for much of this video, you'll see the HDMI output, which reduces the size of the menu and of the other on screen elements. But sometimes you will see the camera screen when that mode doesn't support HDMI output. And when HDMI is connected, only 16x9 aspect is supported. I like having the menu button as the center of the cursor control pad and full touch. Touch focus and shoot, focus only or off, touch metering exposure setting and touch menu operation, as well as touch pad for focus while shooting with the viewfinder. The viewfinder's diopter allows me to shoot without glasses. The battery car door is set far enough away from the tripod socket, which is centered under the lens. SDXC UHS-1 supported, U3 required for 4K video. One right side port with two connectors, USB 2 and micro HDMI. USB charging only, live HDMI for external recorders and monitors. In program mode, the back dial offers alternate exposure combinations. I like that big display of shutter and aperture settings. And in program aperture and shutter priority, press and turn the rear dial for exposure compensation with a 10 stop latitude. There's a menu option to eliminate the press or to select the front dial instead. Also, menu options to customize the dials as well as the four real and five virtual function buttons. In manual, the front dial controls aperture, the kit ramps from f3.5 to 5.6 as you zoom, 
closes to F22. Incidentally, if you want to see the effects of your settings on screen, turn the constant preview on. The rear dial controls shutter, 1 4,000th to T. With T press once, the shutter stays open for up to two minutes or until you press again to close. Camera menu page 5 to switch to the electronic shutter, which goes up to 1 over 16,000. There's a dedicated ISO button, 200 to 25.6, as well as auto. Use the front dial to set the auto ISO limit. Video ISO maxes at 6400. There's a second auto ISO available in program and aperture priority, intelligent ISO, which increases the ISO and the shutter speed when movement is detected. The noise at higher ISOs has a pleasant grain effect and there's no color shift even at 25.6. Use the quick menu accessed using the garbage can icon button to set the meter mode, multi, center, and spot. The meter appears as a graph at the bottom center of the screen. A Panasonic has my favorite histogram, activated on page 4 of the setup menu. It can be moved using touch, and it changes from yellow to white when the optimum setting is reached. Very helpful. Sadly, it doesn't stay on screen to set the ISO. In addition to manual, there are auto single, flexible, and continuous autofocus modes. With face and eye detection, tracking, 49-point area, where a 9-grid rectangle can be moved over the 7x7 grid that covers nearly the entire screen. Custom Multi, where you create a pattern of focus spots. And One Area, turn the rear dial for 8 sizes or use Touch and Pinch. The small spot can be moved over the entire screen on a grid with over 100 horizontal and 60 vertical gradations. And while you can use the cursor control to move it, Touch is the simplest way. The final focus point selection, Pinpoint, is available only in AFS. Face Detect includes Eye Detect. Touch the eye to change. The kit lens does not have a manual focus ring. Press the left cursor key to select a focus assist area for magnification, then use the on-screen control to focus. For fine-tuning, use the left-right cursor controls. Incidentally, peaking, the blue lines that indicate the focus is on by default. Use the menu to adjust the settings, sensitivity, and color, and to turn it off. And that's a nicely comprehensive feature set, and now the good part. Although it works best with fairly static scenes, press the Post Focus Fun 1 button and turn the feature on. It introduces a slight crop. It takes a few seconds to take and save the image, but then you can touch any area of the screen to focus it and save the image. One where the mount is in focus, the other with the tulips. One more trick. Press the Fun 3 button and the images are merged into a focus stack. Now both are in focus. And although this lens doesn't, this feature is great for macro work. There's a dedicated white balance button. In auto mode, shift the amber blue axis. In other modes, select a preset, set a Kelvin temperature, or capture and save up to four custom settings. Press up and set to capture while pointed at a white or gray card. Then adjust along blue amber or magenta green to fine tune. Color profiles, called photo styles, can be selected from eight presets and with a trip to the menu can also be fine-tuned with contrast, sharpness, noise reduction, and saturation. On the menu, there's a selection of filter effects. All are gimmicky, but some may be useful or interesting in specific settings. And last but not least, use the menu to access Panasonic's highlight shadow curves. Such a powerful and interesting feature. There are presets to raise or lower the contrast and brighten shadows. And three custom settings can be created by adjusting the shadow curve and or the highlight curve. Panorama mode creates in-camera images with two widths in all four directions. Press the bottom of the cursor control to access drive modes. For burst, I set exposure and focus to manual JPEG fine 16 megapixel resolution. SH Super High uses the electronic shutter and resets the resolution to 3.8 megapixels. The mode is limited to 3 seconds, capturing 119 images, 40 per second. 
Hi uses the mechanical shutter and runs about 6 images per second. Keeps on going. 347 images in 60 seconds. Using continuous focus will be slower. Using the electronic shutter, faster. Self timer with 2 and 10. 10 with 3 images. And Panasonic still exclusive 4K burst mode, which turns video into 8.3 megapixel stills. Three ways to use this. Burst records as long as you hold the shutter down. Burst SS starts with the shutter press and then stops with the second press. Pre-burst saves the second before and the second after the shutter is pressed. All three save video files at the current stills aspect ratio into a 30 frame MP4 file. In camera, you can scan through the file to find the frame you want to save as an image, but you can also extract frames from the video using Photoshop. Lots of options and permutations. The GX85 records video in both the higher bitrate MP4 format, up to 100 megabits per second requiring a UHS Class 3 type card, as well as AVC HD. And at resolutions up to UHD 4K, 3840 by 2160 at 30 frames. The full HD modes support 60 frames. There's a dedicated mode position for video, but the red button can record video in all modes except panorama, and with all settings except post focus and a few scene modes. In the other modes, the shutter button can be used to take photos while recording video. Two options here. Video priority takes low quality images, but does not interrupt the video. Photo priority takes photos at the current still settings, but the video pauses for a second. In video mode, the shutter button can also start and stop recording. Now there are different crops for AVC HD, 4K and HD modes. The segment recording time varies from 2959 at 720, odd times for HD, but in 4K and AVC HD is limited by available card space. Touch the mode icon to select the video exposure mode, P, A, S or M. There's no auto ISO in video mode. Shutter, aperture and ISO can all be adjusted while recording. There's an on-screen meter and the histogram to judge your settings. Two zebra patterns can be set, 100% for overexposure and 70% for white skin, then select which to display while making your exposure adjustments. This is an interesting time to revisit the highlight shadow curves, as with the test chart, it's easy to see how the changes affect the image. Creating a more contrasty image with a steep curve or a softer image with a more shallow curve. And these are the extremes of the adjustment. In AF continuous, single point, the focus point can be touched to move it around the screen and focus will follow, although it's not always reliable. Manual focus is actually about the same. Press MF area on screen to move the focus point and rack the focus to the selected subject. Use monochrome live view to change the camera screen to black and white, where it's often easier to see focus clearly. There's neither mic in or headphone out, but there are on-screen meters and a manually set level adjustment. The GX85 supports both optical and electronic stabilization settings. For video, they combine to provide 5-axis hybrid stabilization with an increased crop. Snap movies, which record in HD, can be configured with a duration, a focus effect, and a color fade effect. Although slightly gimmicky, they do make good punctuation for travel videos. To configure live cropping, which crops and records in HD, select the duration and then set the starting composition using touch is easiest, press set, and then set the end point. Press record to create the recording with a smooth move from beginning to end. Now I wish the time was more configurable and that the recording could continue after the move ends. Best done with a tripod, but again, great for setting the scene in a travel video. Connect a monitor or recorder to the micro HDMI jack. The output resolution and frame rate are controlled by the internal record setting. 
but the 4K photo modes are not supported. Select Info Display Off for a fully clean output. The menu still appears on the camera screen. There's a time-lapse feature to create movies with a reasonable range for interval and duration. After you've shot the images, select the resolution and the frame rate, and I'm hoping that they're going to add 24 in the next firmware update, and sequence the images forwards or backwards. An interesting touch. Panasonic's free Wi-Fi app is available for iOS and Android here on an iPad. The app lets you select and transfer photos from the camera to your device for posting on social media. It's also a remote for the camera, and in my opinion, Panasonic's remote features are the most complete and functional for photos and video. Now, I plan to use it to record the one light scene, but between the lens and the ISO, there wasn't enough light to make it work. There's also time sync and geotagging. And there's more. The app creates collages of your images, select your style and the pictures you want to use. And it also assembles those snap movies into a longer video. Again, perfect for posting. Playback can crop and resize images and provides an extensive raw processing capability to adjust exposure, white balance, and to add a photo style, but not the filter effects. Panasonic provides all of the capabilities that you'd expect and then adds features and functions that really enhance and challenge your creativity. Considering its price, weight, and size, the GX85 is a great value.